Hello everyone, welcome to my in-depth look at Viper. After playing the Alpha for Valorant, I really found myself coming back to Viper. I think she really meshes well with my playstyle and she has awesome zoning abilities. Her ultimate is insane. And overall, she's just a really fun character to use. Phone dead. Front sight, back sight. Teammates an elbow, deep elbow. On. That's gonna suck I want to show you guys the potential that Viper has, how important she can be, and how she can help your Valorant team towards winning the game. Viper uses poisonous utility to control the map, cripple enemies' visions, and set up huge outplays. Viper, like all agents, has two basic abilities, one signature ability and one ultimate. Viper's abilities cost fuel, which is essentially like mana. Your two basic abilities are utilities that you can purchase at the start of the round, your signature ability is readily available, and your ultimate is charged throughout the game. Your first basic ability is Snakebite, allowing you to fire a projectile that explodes into a pool of damaging acid. Poison Cloud is your other basic, allowing you to throw a gas emitter that can be reactivated into a poisonous smoke which costs fuel. This can be used for smoking off parts of the map and blocking enemy vision toward potential choke points. It can also be picked up and rethrown. Unlike CSGO, other games you might be familiar with, you can't buy smokes or flashbangs for every character. So basic abilities are your form of utility and you want to buy these most rounds to help you protect and attack bomb sites. Your signature ability, which doesn't need to be purchased and is readily available on a recharge timer, is Toxic Screen. This deploys a line of gas emitters which can be reactivated to then rise up into a huge wall at the cost of some fuel. This cuts vision completely from the two sides of the wall and anyone in the wall is blind to the outside. Your ultimate is where Viper truly excels. After 7 kills or orbs, which can be collected through the map, you can use Viper's Pit which emits a huge toxic cloud over a large area that lasts for as long as you are inside of it. Enemies within that cloud are highlighted to Viper giving her great vision of the enemy, and she is concealed during her time in the pit. This can be used on a whole bomb site to make game changing plays. So I'm going to show you how these abilities can be best used for in game situations on the map Bind, which was one of the two maps we got to play in the alpha. So this is the character screen. This is where you pick your agents. And so once you're locked in, you cannot change uh, until the game is over. So once you're in, you are in. For pistol round, I ended up going with a ghost and I'd buy a, a poison cloud and I'd, bu I'd buy a snake bite because you only get $800 on pistol round. And I found the ghost to be really useful because I wanted to prioritize abilities over gunplay, especially when I'm playing Viper, because I feel like having the ability to zone out the enemy. And I mean that by like, um, for instance, as I was playing mid here on Haven, uh, there's only two bomb sites, but the middle part is really important because of this teleporter here. Uh, you can use it to fast rotate the B. I knew defending mid was very important, so I, what, what I started doing was I threw my poison cloud up front and I'd pop it right away. Uh, essentially, my thought behind this was to push off anyone who was trying to get in middle fast or try to take a quick fight. I wanted to push them away immediately, and I didn't want them to take this area at all, so I wanted to buy some time. So I always pop that really early and I took a peek after just to see if anyone was behind it, you know, looking for some kills, some entries. Um, I did have a pretty good success holding mid like this, just kind of popping my smoke uh, on and off and kind of playing around it, uh, getting inside of it just to see if anyone's going to push up, you know, and backing out last second and then dropping it. My goal here was to... Um, if I threw a deep one, uh, that gave me the ability to kind of sneak up into this corner here, which is really nice because once I un, uh, once I um, close the cloud, I can see down this lane here, which a lot of people would play. Um, and to cross mid, a lot of people would go back and forth. So you know, I just tried to like really play in this area and just to um, just to really work it and make sure you know make people afraid of going into mid. And I thought Viper did a really good job of that. Her, her cloud is just uh, really amazing. And what's, what's even better is if you stand in her cloud as an enemy, your armor will decay. Uh, this is all poisonous to um, even friend, friendlies as well because the abilities also hurt teammates. Uh, gunplay does not hurt teammates. There's no friendly fire with guns, but if they walk in your abilities, they hurt. By popping this immediately, if I wanted the other team to like push through, I was going to force them into that cloud, which then would remove their armor. So 
It was up to them if they wanted to push through or not. And uh, it, it worked out really well. Um, there are multiple ways to do this. Uh, Viper is very flexible. You can put down these traps. You can ex you can pop them. You can close them. And if like no one's here or you know no one's like anywhere near them on the other site, you can go ahead and just pick this up real quick and rotate to the other site and then make a play with it later on if you want to. Um, as for her toxic screen, which is the skill that uh, goes down in a straight line, as you can see on your left hand side on the map, you see how the, there's a teal line. Where I'm looking is essentially where the line's going to end. Uh, by aiming into the aiming into the sky, I'm essentially maxing out that range. And so on the A bomb site, uh, we call the showers. What I would do is I'd usually aim up here just to get full coverage. I don't want. I, I want to make sure this gets all the way. Um, I would put the wall there and I would pop it if I heard some showers or if they wanted to execute through this, you know, I'd play close to it. And then, you know, I turn it off uh, on and off and just to see if anyone was playing behind it. Um, I did catch a few people rotating to the left side. So usually what I do is I'd throw it up like this. And then what they would do is they'd rotate over to the left side, but I would drop it immediately and I would catch some people crossing mid uh, or crossing in the middle of the smoke and they'd drop. And then so. I'd catch him off guard sometimes, which is very cool because I can put the wall up and down. And it's like, oh, he put the wall up, so he's going to cross. And I'm like, oh, I put the wall down and then boom, you know, I shoot him as he's trying to cross. Like just fun things like that. Uh, Viper is really good for. It's really fun to experiment with kind of like with like irregular timings, I would say, with all with her abilities, the poison cloud and the toxic screen. So on the B site, what I would usually do as Viper is my go to setup was I'd always set up a trap here just in front of the window that way if they're in hookah and they went to the execute side i'd pop this right away and i'd play like under the window um and i would let them jump out and i'd get the i'd get the jump on them uh, another thing i'd like to do was put a wall here i'd aim high of course because i want the line to go all the way across um, as you see on the map it kind of i just want to make sure i get this whole coverage here um, i'd put the wall here and then my other smoke would be like over here. So if they were hitting the B site, I could play on either side. Like if they were hitting hookah, um, if they're hitting hookah, I'd pop the hookah smoke and I'd take the fights down low. Or like if they're coming long B and I want them to jump on hookah, but I'm in a really bad spot, you know, I'd pop the pop the cloud here and I'd rotate back to this side. And I'd let them jump out, you know, kind of play around the smoke. Like, there's just so much I could do uh, and work with. It gave me a lot of room to really play how I want to play, uh, which is what I like most about Viper. I, I just think that she's pretty flexible in terms of um, moving around the bomb site and uh, taking control, uh, forcing them to pick one or the other, you know, uh, t uh, pick and choosing my gunfights. You know, just being able to control that is, is really important, I think. On the attacking side, uh, I didn't get to experiment too much with Viper. Um, I did play a lot of games, but I didn't really go into my own server and kind of theory craft and look at the potential setups that I could do. Um, so this will be very limited. But the things I did in the alpha was I kind of I like to stand back here, and as you notice on the map, you can see the T line once again. Uh, the wall will go all the way across um, on that T line, and so essentially what I'm doing here is I'm cutting off a part of the bomb site and I'm forcing them to play. Um, Either play in front of it or play behind it. And it goes all the way to the bomb site. Like so. And then once I pop it, I tell my team to go and like execute. And then I, what the main focus here was to essentially cut the bomb site in half. And by doing that, um, we're able to take fights here, here, and then isolate this guy here. Elbow is what we called it. And to hopefully get, you know, a good an even trade or just to win the gunfight overall and to make sure that they weren't getting shot at um, by the guy heaven or a potential player playing over here. So my main intention here was just to cut off the bomb site and just to force them to either run through it, which gave me room to kind of lurk around. And while they're pushing this side, I can lurk around and take my own fights. Um, in my book, it's a win-win. Uh, it's just pretty cool. It's it's pretty cool that I can just cut the bomb site in half if I want to, um, and just to uh, make plays around it. Uh, it's very interesting. 
once I get the wall down and the wall's like up and I wanted to, wanted to use some other abilities without peeking out too much, my snake bite actually bounces off walls and I can land pools like in the corner um, and po possibly force people out and uh, getting some information without actually peeking and taking a fight. And if I can get someone to get, you know, get forced out, I can, you know, take the fight here or uh, essentially just being a pain in the ass is essentially what I want to be. I want people to look at me while uh, my team is over here planning the bomb and winning the round. Uh, you know, I just want to be able to like take the attention off them, let them let them do their own thing, and I'm gonna lurk around and kind of just play around them as well, and just buy them time to get the bomb down. So another cool thing that Viper can do on the other bomb site is notice on the map how uh, you see the teal line. Um, I want to build a wall, so I'm essentially again cutting the bomb site in half. I peeked out and cut about this part down. That way I can I can stay on the right side, pop the wall. And I can walk across uh, slowly without making any noise and just to like, you know, take a one on one fight or force someone to peek on the other side. Or if they don't peek at all, I can find myself into this corner here. And then once I put the wall down, you know, boom, I'm in this spot and they had no idea. Another thing I did on attack with Viper is if we took hookah room control, um, I'd crouch down and I'm crouching because oftentimes fights are taken from backside and you can see your head. So. And all of this is pretty much spammable, so I'm always crouching here. Um, as we're executing, I try to get a uh, try to get a snake bite on the door. Uh, it's probably not a perfect pool, but I want to be able to cover this entire area essentially because the rotators are going to be coming in. And if they if an early rotator got info and he's already at the bomb site, I want to be able to slow him down or just do something to uh, slow the rotate. Oftentimes, I could throw one inside of the container. And by doing so, I would force him to go left. And essentially, I would, you know, try and move him like a piece. Like, instead of, if I know he's back sight, I might, like, ricochet one off the back and then push right. And I know he's probably not going to swing in the pool. And I'm going to force him on that side of the bomb site. And so, I don't know, it just gives me a lot of room to really maneuver around. I didn't use the ultimate too much, but it's pretty insane. Uh, the ultimate doesn't have much of a range. And I mean that by, like... If you want to put the ultimate down, make sure you're somewhat in the center of the bomb site because uh, this green circle here will indicate where the center of the ult is, and that kind of spreads. And I'll show you here in just a sec. So, best case scenario is that you're like down in numbers and you really want to pop an ult and win this round. We'll say the bomb's planted here, so we'll just put the ultimate here. Once it goes down, you get this huge green cloud that you get to really maneuver around in. Their armor is like going away and uh, they're highlighted red. So if you get close to them, you get like a pretty clear, clear shot uh, on them. Uh, on their screen, they're going to be a little uh, hazy and it's going to be all green. You know, things are going to appear, but it won't be clear cut. Like for me, if, if I see someone close enough in the smoke, they'll be highlighted red. Um, and I don't know if they're going to change any of this. Of course, this is all a work in progress. This is the. Uh, Everything that's like in alpha is bound to change or not be the same, you know. So it's it's definitely possible for things to change, but the ultimate's pretty cool. Uh, it uh, gives me some a lot of room to work with. I can hide in the corner here and kind of wait for them to come in. Uh, it's just kind of it gives me the ability to move around without being seen and just to, to play in my ultimate. Uh, if you leave, you can notice the smoke integrity is dropping, and when it hits zero, you stayed outside the ultimate for too long, and it'll perish. Uh, I I, I've won most of my fights, I think, in the ultimate. I've lost a couple, just testing out some things, but it's pretty good. It's pretty damn good. So we're on map Haven. This is the map with three bomb sites, A, B, and C. And on the A bomb site, what I like to do frequently was just put a simple wall um, uh, here. And by looking into the sky again, as you can notice on the map, I could actually put a wall all the way to the B bomb site. Mostly what I did on the A bomb site though was I just put a wall here, basic wall, and then I put a poison cloud just here in front. So I was able to essentially control one side or the other. Uh, depending on how my teammate played, I could dictate which side we could focus on together. So like I'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm smoking long, so the wall would be up for a while, and then we could focus on sewer, or we could play an angle where 
uh, sewer would come up, and then we could wait for the guys to run to the, the wall. Or I'd put that wall down, and I'd put this up, and it would focus to them long if they were, like, heavy long. Like, there's so much you could do with these smokes. Um, or I could put them both up, which would take more uh, fuel, and I can't have them up for that long. Because if I have them both up, then it consumes a lot more. So um, I can't have them both up always at the same time. For the B-bomb site, I didn't do too much here. I didn't really find my walls to be super, super helpful, especially the toxic screen. Um, it was a good wall, but I what I more what I ended up doing a lot more was to put a cloud here at the beginning, beginning like throw it at the bottom and then step away, activate it, and then sometimes walk down and take a peek here. Or kind of just, you know, put a smoke cloud just in front of me and just kind of activate it when they come when they're coming up to the site where I hear them. Cause my main goal here is to essentially pop the smoke and then to delay the other team from coming through and buying my uh, my team time to rotate. Um, this map is very interesting because there's three bomb sites. So the only way into B is through A or from A or from C, and this is the the garage that a lot of teams will go through to split C. Um, otherwise, the only way to go is through the front as well, which is usually what teams mostly do. Uh, at least that's what they did in the alpha. Sometimes I'd give myself a one way where like I could, I'd squeeze out and kind of play the edge of the smoke where I'd let people come in and walk down mid, I'd take a shot or peek window from the right side, or I could do it on the left side as well. Um, the cloud just gives me a lot of flexibility to kind of maneuver and go around. All right, on the C-bomb side, I did find myself putting this wall down frequently. Starting here, I just throw a simple wall down. In fact, I would keep this wall down a lot of the times because I want the C player to be able to see down uh, long C. Sometimes I'd throw this down and I'd rotate and play the other site with like a poison cloud. But I just wanted to give my C player some extra help. So I don't know, just some cool things. The, the potential for this character is pretty crazy. Uh, I I was doing pretty basic things because it's alpha. You know, only, only had a couple days to play. Uh, I didn't really theory craft too much, but I did want to show you guys um, how cool she can be and you know how important she is to holding bomb sites and anchoring sites and playing around her smokes, zoning people out, taking control of the fights. Uh, you know. Element of surprise, putting your walls up and down, um, playing inside your ultimate. Like, there's so many things that she can do. Hopefully, you guys take this and jumpstart your game essentially, and just to kind of show you how I did things in the alpha. And things are bound to change, of course. It's all a work in progress. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys what I did and what kind of worked for me. If you enjoyed this commentary style, please let me know in the comments or by leaving a like. If you want any more breakdowns or in depth looks at any other agents, let me know. Make sure to like and subscribe for a bunch of Valorant videos over the next couple of days and throughout the beta.